Let's move on to a presentation from the global luxury automobile brand BMW on how they have been using gaming to attract their customers. Well, if you're intrigued, please join me in welcoming Pia, who heads the gaming and sponsoring at BMW Group of Germany, who's joining us. Pia, thank you so much for your valuable time. You're looking incredible, and thank you. Uh, you know, the different time zones, I'm sure, uh, would, uh, you know, garner to our different uh, introductions, but, you know, we were elated, and we'd love to now pass it on to you. Apologies on the delay from our end. Over to you. Thank you very much, and uh, especially thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure to, to talk to you. And uh, yeah, if it's okay, I would share my short presentation and uh, we'll um, yeah, show you what we did and what we're doing at BMW. And if there's some questions um, afterwards, we can talk about that. So I tried to share and you let me know if it works, hopefully. Sure, yeah, I'm going to be sticking it <laughs> to the time. The presentation is going to be on the screen. Give me... Just a minute, here we go. So maybe you give me a short information if it works. Sure, Pia, yes, it does, it does, over to you. Perfect, thank you very much. So um, today I've brought you some charts to really show how our approach is, so what we did with BMW. So many of you know that we started in 2020 conquering the area of esports and some might ask why because BMW is not a traditional company in terms of esports so the fit is quite new and special for us and the reason why it really was that there is a perfect fit between our brand strategy and the esports market because it's yeah like progressive it's about sports it's about um doing things together and we had some goals at bmw and the most important one is to make the brand future proof because you know we are just existing about 100 years and we have uh, yeah i would not say an older target group but there is a big need to really achieve brand utility at the really young age so this is why we decided to go into esports to really raise brand awareness and to really drive competition within this esports community so how did we do that? What was our way? We really took a lot of time to really understand the community, to really embrace the scene know-how and to really understand what they're talking, how they're speaking, what are the topics interesting for us, and we really learn to interact with the community on eye level. Furthermore, we really identified the sweet spot in, in this ecosystem because we needed to check what is our way into the esports community. Is it like sponsoring a tournament? Is it working with the teams? Is it some like um, our kind of communication? And just really check what fits for a brand like BMW. And finally, it's quite important to really find your brand attribute which you can bring into the esports um, community. And the main important thing from my side is no usual advertising. So really try to be like authentic um, and really try not to bring your product in where it doesn't fit. So really be like, it should feel natural, I would say. So what we did is really, yeah, standing out of the crowd and leave a mark. So we decided who we want to be in this community and we decided to be the rebel, to be not the traditional BMW thing and the most people know. So really take new and brave ways of communication. So really rebel-like. So this is what we did. And our, our result from all these thinkings from planning and strategy was that we signed one or five of the best League of Legends teams in the world. We really have chosen a global setup because we decided to be like mainly everywhere on the world to have a great impact. And we started with League of Legends because it's, uh, it's a strategic game, it's not a shooter game. And for a brand like BMW, it's easier really to start on the strategic thing. Um, nowadays, we also work with Valorant. We get some steps further, but we started with this kind and um, it really worked hard. So I have a video with me. Hopefully the audio will work. If not, let me know.
Um, so what do you see? Pia, we're not able to get any audio on the video. Could you uh, just try and, uh, yeah. Yeah, let yeah. me try. <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah. I'm there to assist and so is my team. So uh, on the video, we couldn't really hear anything. I tried to get music <laughs> in, if not because of the time. It's, it's no worries if there is no audio. So next time it's fine for the moment. Sure, so, sure, yeah. As I you so like. you saw the pictures and hopefully the pictures were nice. Um, I just wanted to show you that um, it's not a traditional way of communication we are doing with BMW and eSports because if we want to be part of the community of this esports hemisphere for us it's important to really be authentic and understand what they're interested in so the video you have seen was our launch video and this is not the classic bmw communication as you might know so we decided to implement a buzzing narrative that's united in rivalry because this is what it is and um, all teams are united in what they are doing. They are all gamers. They all want to win. And that's the rivalry they have because everybody wants to win. So this is really a narrative which works with the teams because the teams use it for taking this beef idea to, to make um, funny and great communication with this narrative and together with BMW and really helped us out. And it really showed that this is a really good working strategy. So, come on. Okay, so then we did the next level after we had this um, communication start. We take the next uh, step having a combined event. So we call it the BMW Berlin Brawl because the first brawl took place in Berlin. And this was our first live show to bring the community together um, with, the, with the players because the players are a lot on the way on the whole world and a lot of gamers have never ever the chance to meet one of these guys so we brought them together in berlin to really have the chance or to to enable the community to be quite near to their idols that worked well we had a great impact we had great people with us great key opinion leaders and um, important people for us to really make it a great success and afterwards we took the next step. This was our communication in 2021. We continued the rivalry by implementing a manga. We called it the Heroes of Rivalry. And that's the next step in our like range that we said, okay, pretty cool. So we had the first steps, joining the teams, uh, bringing out the buzzing narrative with United and Rivalry, then bring the fans together with the gamers and um, with our Berlin Brawl. And now what can we do to really make the players of the teams to be heroes? And um, that's the reason why we decided to um, yeah, have a real Japanese uh, manga draw who did it. It was Eki Bright who really did this complete manga story with us and it worked really well. He drawed every team as a manga. And we had like eight episodes, which completely tells the story of the teams together with BMW. And um, this manga thing is something which is like unusual, but really embraced by a lot of different target groups from like a different age. And um, this was great for us because every player of a team was the hero himself in this manga and in the end we also had the chance to bring in our cars again because bringing a product into an esports hemisphere always needs to feel really natural because advertising is not of interest of the community so that's what we did and this is what we are still doing i have another video now with me um i assume we will again have no audio, but anyway, let's um, yeah join the pictures of the video and talk about that afterwards.
The word I really like here, and this is something I really want to, to let you know that this is for me, in my opinion, and the, one of the most important things when you're stepping into um, the topic of esports with a brand like BMW, which is like pretty much more traditional and which comes not easily to your mind when you're thinking of esports. You really need to be brave to do a communication which is really of interest in the community. If I would do usual BMW communication, nobody would be of interest of that. So what you can see here, I've, I've, I've never thought that I will see a fire spitting dragon um, climbing down the famous BMW headquarter in Munich. And I'm really happy that the company really decided to go this way to really um, yeah, target really young target group and to show them that we are ready to do fancy and new stuff. And this brings me to the end of my presentation. I have just written down our rules to become an accepted player in the community. The very first is really to understand the community and also their way of communication and really communicate their way um, to learn from them. So, don't try to do it the classic way, really talk to them, learn to them. I'm often very open to talk to our teams to understand what is the right way to, to do activation, how to talk to the people, what can I do, what is not interesting. And I'm really open to understand and I'm really happy to do, like I told you, the unusual way to use the unusual way. And what's also really important is not to push any kind of products into that gaming. It always needs to feel natural and supporting. And I always say, if you want to bring a product into a game, please use a game where the product has happened. So that's what we did last year with, um, with Rocket League because it's a car related game. So we brought in a car. I would never bring in a car into League of Legends or Dota 2 because it wouldn't feel natural and nobody would understand why there is a BMW in the game. But using it in Rocket League feels like cool. This is a really cool way because it's all about cars, it's about cars and football. So why do not bring in a BMW car in there? And uh, yeah, that's what I told you before. Never put a product in a game where the product feels unnatural or does not happen. So that's what I told you before. And I think um, that's what I also learned during the last two years. Being an enabler is a good way to, to be accepted of the community try to help the gaming scene and the community to grow because there's a long way to go but because there are still people who think gaming is like just only for nerds but that's not right so it's good to be part of this hemisphere with a brand like bmw to show okay take it serious this is really important world a lot of people are in gaming or in esports and it, there's a really great target group for us to talk to and especially an upcoming target group. And um, this is really important for a lot of brands to really get further and to be future-proof. And finally, be brave and try something new, even if it doesn't fit the usual brand positioning. That's what I told you also before and what I wanted to show you um, on the examples before and the videos and the kind of communication we do with BMW. And um, now we are stepping into a third year of esports and we have big plans for sure. So we will enter the next level of rivalry, more to come in May this year. And um, yeah, that's it for the moment. That was a quick one because it was only like 10 minutes. Hopefully you, you learned a bit of that, what we did with BMW. And um, yeah, if there are any questions by now, feel free and just let me know. Sure. Thank you so much, Pia. Well, we would love the conversation to continue but as you rightly said in interest of time and it's a little uh, limited uh, schedule we'd love to engage but meanwhile we'd like to thank you for your valuable time thank you thank you very much